Hi everyone, welcome back to the show, you guys. I have on such a cool guest today. She is the senior vice president of Route. She has really just taken this unicorn of a tech company to the next level. And Chelsea, welcome to the show. I'm just so excited to get yeah. into all of the branding and creative and everything with you today. Yeah, so, so excited. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here and just chat all things Route and, and beyond. So exciting. Okay, so let's let's start from the beginning. Okay, let's start from your own entre entrepreneurial story. Wh what were you kind of doing before Route? What did your life look like at that point? Yeah, I uh, like to take it even a step further and go like way, way back to give more context of like how I grew up and how that has sort of played an amazing part in my whole journey and then how I got here at Route. But essentially, you know, I was a small, young kid, surfer, crazy wild kid in Carpinteria, which is a very small town outside of Santa Barbara. Oh, and, wow. you know, grew up with my two other sisters. We grew up with like this, this curiosity around life. And part of our schooling was like outdoor school. And I think honestly, this played a huge role in just like my own, how do things work? always questioning everything and seeing things in more of an artistic light. Mm. So from like a very small age, I was fascinated by art, science, dance, singing, everything I can do to just like build a story, tell a story and create. And that really led me to um, want to be more involved in the art community. I loved the art community from like a fine arts perspective and went to study fine arts in Portland State, um, oh up in Portland, Oregon. So studied fine arts. And at the time, Portland was like really, really hot. I mean, I think it's always kind of been cool. But yeah. at this point, it was when Portlandia came out, like hipster movement was in full, full swing. I was studying art, had pink hair, piercings, oh, the, whole, the wow. whole gambit, and, <laughs> you know, was really in it. And I think what was so cool about Portland as like a city at that time was those who wanted to pursue art were really empowered by the community. You mm. could be, you know, a, an, a painter, you could be a sculptor and like really make a, a good living. So even in school, I found some success in the art community just by putting on my own shows and doing like gallery shows or just doing my own pop-ups and social media was also starting out. So really it took like that power of social media to be able to communicate with different people in the art world and just start to do fun collaborations, events. It was very, very exciting. Um, and so from there, ended up doing some really fantastic collaborations with West Elm, Anthropology, Urban, yep. um, kind of took on more of a art thought partnership role with them, which was really exciting because at the time, I always say like Anthropology led the whole experiential retail movement. Mm. This was over 10 years ago, and they wanted to take their stores and create like a story. So whenever their shopper would come into the store, it would be, who is she? Where is she from? Does she need a glass of champagne? Like, wh what is this woman's story? And then how could we as a, a retail store help her live her best life? Wow. And I thought that was so interesting and such an exciting concept. How could I take that and apply it to literally anything that I was building? And so I did. And so I'll fast forward like throughout the next couple of years wait, to follow. Wait, hold on oh, real yeah. quick. I want to stop you because I just have one burning question. Yeah. So as an artist, are you doing art installs for these brands? I was or what, doing... were, you, what were you doing for them? Yeah, I, I was doing everything from art installations, which wow. was really just fascinating because I was more on the, the painter side. I loved to paint. It was more in the abstract realm. Mm -hmm. But then um, the art installation was just a different way to bring it to life. So I was working with them in that capacity 
working on selling paintings at West Elm. And then I was also just in a room with with really incredible people trying to come up with the story of what that store was going to sell and how they were going to sell these things to these women. Wow. That is okay. I just had to ask. I mean, and I remember too, especially, I think I was like my first year or two in college when anthropology was just like popping off and everyone Mm -hmm. was so enthralled with the design and the art. And when you would walk in and how everything just had this flow of the store that walked you through all these different types of, you know, yeah. categories of merchandise. Yeah. So it, cool. Okay. So sorry. Really so go incredible. Back to, we're, fa- we're fast forwarding now. No, I mean, that is like the, the whole core of everything. I think that I took away from it and what I do now is all around what is the story that we are trying to tell. And so for the next couple of years, just working with brands, moved back down to Los Angeles and influencer marketing was up and going and in a really great rhythm. And so I found a lot of success, but also just joy out of meeting with people one-on-one, trying to understand what kind of story they wanted to tell and how they wanted to build something that resonated with people and kind of more in a consulting position, if you will. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So beautiful. So you're doing this when, what happens next? Yeah. So in LA at some, you know, very LA event meeting all kinds of fabulous people as one does (laughs) and (laughs) ran into Evan Walker, who is our founder at Route. Um, mm. At the time, Route was not a thing, but he is an incredible serial entrepreneur who has mm. had so many different businesses, um, lots of CPG brands as well. And so hired me, we kind of had a really great conversation around the same topic, brands, storytelling, what we saw in the world at the time of influencer marketing. This was six years ago. And hired me on the spot, said, I want you to be able to help sort of create that narrative and then translate it into brand strategy for his multiple CPG brands that he had at the time. Um, And yeah, it, it was so fun. And I feel like that was my first moment of being thrown into something that felt half tech as well. I've been Mm -hmm. in this very whimsical world of art and fashion and working with all of these really incredible people, but the tech world is a whole other beast and they speak a completely different language. Yeah. What, what was that transition like going from something where, you know, you you talk about being a painter, you talk about art installations. It's so physical, so tangible. Mm -hmm. It's in, you know, it's in the 3d to now moving into telling a story about a tech company that helps you with the ex- the customer journey experience of shipping, right? Mm-hmm. So what what was that trans? Were you kind of like, where do I start? Like, how do I dive in? Like, where do you sink your teeth into yes. the storytelling of that? I mean, so overwhelming after going from a space that I felt very confident in, you speak the same as everyone else in the room to suddenly in like truly what was a boys club, And Mm -hmm. being like, oh my Mm -hmm. God, I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's extremely (laughs) intimidating. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's that whole fake it till you make it type of Mm -hmm. mentality, which you just got to do whenever I was 23 at the time. And he had just had the idea for route. So we were doing all of these kickoff meetings on how we were going to build this company in a living room. We are sitting in a living room just as, as startups usually, you know, happen. Yeah. But really incredible people in that room, some investors, angel investors, I knew nothing about the VC world, um, some engineers, and I'm just like, okay, I have no idea what they are talking about, but I had to have like a pause and reflection moment of what I talk about. I'm realizing they have no idea what I'm talking about either. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity to educate in like a, a very natural, organic and fun way 
what I do because they're going to be like, oh yeah, that's that sounds right because none of us know about any of the creative. So it was kind of like a a, a switching of of my mind and instead of being intimidating, knowing that I did have this superpower that I could bring to the table and then hopefully, you know, have them rally around. I mean, so much awareness just in that conversation alone, but also just the just the sheer mental m mindset shift where you're able to be like, no, like I can belong in this room. I feel like it's so inspiring. Mm -hmm. I feel like normally, again, you know, whether whether or not you're female or not, just as an entrepreneur within a specific niche of, you know, what your specialization is. It can be very intimidating going into a new industry and making that jump or making, even though, again, you're, you know what your strengths are, you know what you're capable of doing. So I think to hear you kind of just say, I had to have a reflection moment and I knew that I was confident in what I was going to speak to and to educate the rest of the partners in the room about, I think is so powerful. Cause I think that takes a lot of, takes a lot of trust in yourself. Yeah. I mean, it it could also be very hard. I've had plenty of those moments throughout my career where I'm like, do I do I know what I'm talking about? This feels really heavy right now. This is incredibly challenging. And then you do just have to be able to take those steps back and not be listening to anyone else and just know like, yes, I, I am providing value. I'm here for a reason. I'm just going to speak to what I know, but also be super open-minded to what everyone else is saying. And people feel that they're very receptive to it. And in that, I think they will also continue to empower you. I could not agree more. So as you guys are sitting in this room and you're discussing, you know, this, this founder has also had multiple CPG brands. He knows the game. He knows, you know, the customer journey is obviously, I'm assuming a lot of it was probably either direct to consumer and or retail based. Mm -hmm. Where was the idea of kind of disrupting this, this idea of shipping directly to the consumer and making it an actual experience where there's more trust yeah. in the shipping process? There's live updates. There's an app. Where did this idea come from? Yes, uh, you're pointing out an amazing thing because Route is a huge, wild company that is so intricate. There's so many different facets mm -hmm. of Route, but how it really started was shipping insurance. And the funny thing is, as we were all discussing, even from the very, very early days, shipping insurance was not the goal. The goal was to build a brand that connected merchants and consumers together in, in a world where we saw a gap of transparency that needed to happen between the two, people were experiencing and still are experiencing issues with all of their online orders, their mm -hmm. packages being lost, like something always happens. And then merchants not really understanding the best way to communicate. Mm -hmm. and so. First, we identified like, okay, there's definitely an issue here. We think that we can come and insert ourselves in a way that is extremely powerful and would allow us to build all of these different products that really provide value to both merchant and consumer. But how is anyone going to care about that in the first place? We are just a new company coming out on the scene. Like, what can we potentially do that? really builds trust from the beginning. And so the shipping insurance, even though it wasn't the ultimate goal and it isn't the sexiest thing that we do, it allowed us to immediately provide value to a merchant and to a consumer and build that trust. So we knew if we could do something as small as a checkbox that allows you to save your package, then eventually it will come as we create new things, people will be like, oh yeah, I, I know Route. I like Route. Like I've used them before. I trust them. So whatever else they want to bring, like, cool. What is it? I mean, yes, out of the gate. Incredible. And I, I'm sitting here because my mind's just kind of blown that it started with only shipping insurance. Because again, I feel like 
as someone that's used you guys both on the merchant side, but also on the consumer side, it's so much larger than that now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like it's, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean like shipping insurance is perfect, but when you guys, so you guys and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are about four years old as a company, correct? Right. Okay. So what did the pandemic do for route? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we all have our own stories of how the pandemic treated us. Right. And uh -huh. it was such a wild time. Um, but honestly, it kind of accelerated our business and we were, what I'm grateful for was the fact that, okay, everyone's at home, they're ordering online. And so our business suddenly triples with the amount of like brand partners that we were having consumers starting to use the app and download it. But then it also allowed us to hire people. We needed more people to help with this business that was like absolutely massive overnight. And so we were able to hire like 170 people during the pandemic, which was really, wow. really incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. Everyone was buying things online. I think it's still, you know, people have a desire to go in store now just for that experience. Back to the anthropology type of example. But I mean, online is here and it's not going to change. And I think even in the, the e-commerce landscape, there is an ability for storytelling that is very, very exciting and unique. Which is, I, yes, I mean, I, I can't imagine what you guys went through walking through the pandemic. You know, I mean, obviously it's something where it's like so scary, especially in those first initial months, right, of what's actually going on. But then to see, you know, the e-commerce boom and everything like that, where all of a sudden now everyone's only going to direct consumer shopping because mm -hmm. there's no other option. I wanted to ask you one of these questions, and, and this is really interesting because you are so naturally a storyteller. You're so naturally a brand builder. What What's the difference between building a brand versus actually building a company? Now that you've seen both sides... And mm -hmm. you've really kind of seen Route grow as this major company, but you've also been in charge of really making sure that you're upholding the brand, the story, the whole journey for the consumer. What What's the difference between those two things? Yeah. Yeah. One of my, my favorite things to talk about, honestly, because you can build a company and I think Route just being tech in nature could have easily said, we want to have this this feature, this package protection, maybe build a SaaS model, and then that's it. And mm -hmm. be very internal, not external facing, and still do rather well, and be a company that provided jobs and provided value in e-commerce. Mm -hmm. But I think, honestly, like when you are striving to be a brand, you are really becoming something that resonates with people on an emotional level. And that is why the storytelling is so important, where very early on, we decided we want people to know who we are and to care about who we are, to be able to grab these merchants and go up market. And these cool, larger brands of the world are only going to care about us if they feel like other people care about us. Mm -hmm. The only reason why anyone will care about us is if they feel a connection. So how can we create connection, even though we're a tech company, how can we use our own platform of being agnostic to any brand, but being able to bring all of these brands together as a way that forms community, allows these brands to really showcase who they are, give them access to better e-commerce platforms, bring in amazing, you know, talent and tastemakers and people who are kind of in the e-commerce slash fashion world mm -hmm. and it, it's it's a recipe but it definitely like makes the biggest difference in the world if you're trying to do something that is beyond just having a company and you want to find this fulfillment in your job and what you're creating and say okay this is actually like touching people in a really beautiful way it's giving me more excitement around my job and it allows whenever things get really hard yeah. there's still so much more reward this is i mean just so the way that you're speaking to a tech company right now like i'm sure everyone <laughs> listening is like this is so 
you you lead with such heart so you lead with such intention and i feel like you can feel that through the platform itself which is really powerful as you were doing all this you know one of the, one of the things that i think you guys have done really well is really you know kind of finding your niche and using it to your advantage as someone that was working on the brand and working on the creative how are you approaching that from your content or from your marketing or even these incredible events that you guys do? How yeah. are you making, like, what, what were those tangible things that you were including in your strategy to make sure that you were really niching down, you were really sending this storytelling message home to your consumer through these different activations? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's so many ways that we kind of started to go about this. First, knowing that we have this app. And there's a lot of eyeballs in this app. People are checking their packages an average of like eight times a day. It's an insane stat. When That's kind of crazy. I mean, I feel yeah. like they check a lot. But <laughs> they, it's true. They don't, That's you know, average? want to dig through their emails. They're just, if you're very excited about something that you're getting and you're like, where is it? Like, is it almost yeah. here? I need to know. Wow. wow. Which is really wild, but. That is wild. We knew if we have all of these eyeballs in this app, how can we use this space to then surface other brands that they might want to buy from, other brands mm -hmm. that they might be interested in? And so we really used the app as that space to curate content around brands that we felt like were championing something. If it was a woman owned brand, a sustainable brand, whatever that might be, it's hard enough to find a brand that you want to mm -hmm. shop from nowadays because it is so oversaturated. So we wanted to be able to create a space that helped surface these brands and curate them for you. So they were our recommendations based on, you know, the criteria was maybe they are starting to emerge and maybe they have a really cool founder. Maybe mm -hmm. they do have a, a sustainable component or something like that behind it. So that was our first way of kind of like, okay, let's weed through all of this. Let's create a really cool story with this brand and maybe tell, like do a founder story, surface it in the app. Um, but then outside of that, like the extension of that was now how do we take this brand and then create a tangible moment for them, like a, a pop-up or some sort of fun experience for their, their consumers. And you guys have done such a beautiful job. I mean, there's so many, you guys, if you have not checked out like route social media, or you haven't been to an event where route is at, there's so many different ways that you guys have activated. That's really cool. Um, so kudos to you guys. Cause I Thank mean, you. your consumer experience I think is there, but also to on behalf of brands and merchants that that opportunity to have that spotlight, to be able to be called out in a, in a way where it's highlighting their brand, it's highlighting their work is so important, especially to like what you said to emerging brands. So, I mean, well done. I Thank want you. to move this conversation now into more of the, more of the digital space, because okay. I feel like, again, as a tech company, as someone that's dealing with consumers, you guys are very familiar with eyeballs. You guys are very familiar with your community and with your audience. And as of right now, we're seeing such a huge shift. We're seeing the creator economy that is just fully blooming right now. We're seeing social media now become just such a pivotal part of everyone's lives. For you guys, where do you see the digital space going? Like, where do you see, you know, direct to consumer, re, you know, shopping and business and things like that going? And how is how is that also evolving with what's going on with social media and creators and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not going to stop growing. I think that's just where we live now. Like we live half in the, the present tangible moment and half in this digital space. Mm. And, you know, it is what it is, but I don't think that has to be a negative thing. I think it could be a really beautiful way that you're connecting with people you would never meet. Mm -hmm. And so you know, for us, the way that we see it is we always want to position ourselves at route to be that connective tissue. As things mm -hmm. continue to grow and evolve, we will continue to grow and evolve and be there in the middle, making sure that whatever consumers are interested in, we can help kind of channel and funnel them to these different merchants or brands 
or creators who are building brands. I think that will be its own platform one day, maybe sooner rather than later. And so, you know, I think what I'm seeing though, as it grows is it also becomes even more oversaturated than what it is today. Mm -hmm. And people are going to start to be thinking of how can we weed through all of this stuff that we're inundated with in the digital space. It's, it's too much. That's why people like to take tech breaks, right? Mm -hmm. And just like put their phones away because it's just so overwhelming. So I think we're going to be getting to a place where personalization is going to become everything and being able to personalize the way that you shop, the brands that you like to shop from, what you're seeing and what you don't want to see will be so vastly important to the consumer moving forward. Um, I think a way that we're going to see people weed stuff out is like the the future of e-commerce also lies in partnerships. I think that we won't see any more standalone brands or as many. I think we're going to start to see more partnerships. I think retail is going to come back with a vengeance and less D to C, more retail for sure, um, mm -hmm. because they will become the ultimate curator as well. A retailer, an online retailer will be saying, we get that there's too many D to C brands out there. So we've chosen our top 10 and people are just going to naturally gravitate towards that track. Um, so Absolutely. yeah, that's a, a long, short answer to a huge conversation that we can have. <laughs> Yeah, for that I, space. I could I could not agree more. I think that you, you know, I think that you hit the nail on the head on the partnerships um idea because I, I feel like it, it's also something too where we're seeing more and more saturation, whether or not we're talking about the CPG community or anything, just the mm -hmm. D2C brands alone or retail brands alone. But I I love this idea of the partnerships, and I even see this a little bit with creators as well now too. You know, it seems like there are more and more brands that are actually reaching out to creators to launch their own version of their product and to really be able to dive into these different niches of audiences or mm -hmm. following to really serve them well and to really serve that community in a way where it's like they're producing a product that is so in tune with the community because it's aligning with maybe this creator, or it's aligning with this brand or whatever it is that it becomes this like superstar product or offering because it's so niche down and there's mm -hmm. already a platform to do, like there's already a platform of people that are wanting it. Yeah. So I, I could not agree more. So as we're sitting here, I'm sure there are so many, so many listeners that are like, okay, hold on. I want to build a brand or I want to launch this, or I'm halfway through launching this. You know, I need to, I'm taking all this in. I want to work on my storytelling. I really want to work on my approach. What is one piece of advice that you would give maybe someone that is starting up, you know, to how they would approach their storytelling or how they would tackle their branding? Like what's one piece of advice that you'd give them? Yeah, it sounds really, really cheesy, but honestly, like authenticity is key. I think people's like bullshit meter is through the roof nowadays and they will sniff out, you know, if they feel like someone is not being authentic or if they feel like even like your product doesn't feel authentic, they're curious, like, what is this product? Where is it made? How did you make this? And people, you know, the conscious consumer is, we have mm. to assume everyone is a conscious consumer now and how do we speak to them? So. When I say like authenticity, it's when you are building a brand, when you're out there about to launch, like how are you going to communicate what you believe in, what your product stands for, how it is made, because that's what people care about nowadays and that's what they're looking for. If you don't do that, you put yourself in a really risky spot. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, this has been honestly such a powerful interview and you just brought so much value to the table. Thank you so much. I always end this podcast on my final question and it's the same question every single time. And it is, what does influence mean to you? Mm. Influence to me is honestly something that is positively impacting my life. I am allowing it to. And so I am influenced by 
beautiful, positive people, words, art, stories that enter my life and allow me to sort of change my perspective on it. So that's the influence that I, I strive to put out there as well. Beautiful, completely beautiful and well said. Chelsea Moon, thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can everyone find you? How can they get to know you more? Where can they find Route? Please drop all the links. Yes, yeah. I mean, my Instagram, <laughs> Chelsea Moon, just come say hello. You have a question, DM me. I am here to, to create along with all of you. And then, you know, we have this amazing LA office, lots of events, lots of pop-ups, some pickleball happening there oh, as well. Yeah. So open to everybody. I want an invite to pickleball. Yes. That's amazing. So awesome. All right. Well, Chelsea, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. You guys we will drop all the details Thank down in the you. show notes. If you guys care to check out Route, whether you're a merchant or your consumer, please check it out. And Chelsea, thanks for going under the influence thanks, with us. Thanks, Whitney. Thanks so much.